I was aware of the Sheffield project through being a member of the Untitled Gallery. Its name started after two three-hour meetings where we couldn't decide what to call it. So uh, somebody suggested Untitled, and we said, yeah, that's it. I was interested in colour and shape primarily, and space. I was trying to construct pictures out of what I saw about Sheffield without really being concerned with whether it was a situation that was alive or deteriorating or anything like that at all. I'm not young anymore, but I feel myself very fortunate in getting into digital at the time that I did. I could use a, a modest digital camera and do so many things which I wanted to do with the complexities of film cameras, especially if you're using several different film magazines. The camera on the tripod, you really do assess, especially with the cost of film, processing and paper at the time, you, you want to get that shot absolutely right. And you move the camera around and in, in quite small details, uh, you, you move in, you move out, you, you change your position and then it's just right and you want to take that picture. But with digital, you know, you can spray the thing with lots and lots of pictures. And I've been very aware of that since I've started using digital. So in my head, I'm trying to use digital as I did film photography and be very careful about what it was that I photographed. Yes. <laughs> no, I can't do this really. It doesn't matter. We'll go around the front. I haven't photographed people very much. I'm interested in locations particularly. And also I wasn't um, aware at the time of making documentary work at all. It was only later that I realised that possibly there was some value in the photographs, especially as things disappeared. I'd done some work around Sheffield on, uh, on substations, electricity and gas substations, which I found fascinating, mainly because you weren't supposed to notice they were there. The way I got to know the city was through the substation work which took me to lots of areas. I was interested in colour and shape primarily, and space. And so I was trying to construct pictures out of what I saw about Sheffield without really being concerned with what those things were. So my approach was, was to wear a high-vis jacket, a helmet, uh, and a sort of cloak of invisibility. And I used to carry a tripod and a camera mount on it, smile at everybody I saw, and nobody ever questioned it from then on. It was quite extraordinary. When we came to live in Sheffield in, in 72, we were living above the city and we were immediately aware of the sounds of the city. And we could hear this amazing uh, deep, booming hammer noise. We happened to be driving through the city at night and there was this boom. And I said, that's it, that's where that place is. And it was called George Turman Platz. And it had a 15,000 kilogram hammer that, that dropped on hot metal and to make fashion these, uh, these wheels. So I just wandered in as I usually do and said, can I take some pictures? And I was immediately stopped by a foreman who said, I'm sorry, you can't, mainly for safety reasons that you can't do this. But if you do exactly as I say, you have to stand exactly where I say with your tripod and not move it. And you've got to come tomorrow night. And I said, um, why have I got to come tomorrow night? He said, because the next day we shut down for the summer and we're not reopening. So, in fact, I got an opportunity to capture this, this place uh, on its last night of operation.
I was looking for signs of dereliction more than anything else. I think there's a sort of a slightly negative side of that, which I now um, think is not helpful in, in, in my photography. And now I feel quite differently about my photography. I, I do photography the way I want to do it. There's no peer pressure, there's no group pressure at all. So I think if I did that sort of photography again, it would really be quite different now.